What's up, everybody, and welcome to another special edition of the Falcons Final Whistle podcast recorded right here in the Ticketmaster studios. Mm. And we have 17 little news nuggets to talk about, Tori. Why? Because it's schedule release day. And as you put it on Twitter, happy schedule release day to all who observe. And there are lots of you. Yeah, and celebrate. Yeah. Observe and celebrate. Who are super into it because we've known the opponents and who the Falcons the teams the Falcons are going to play. I just had that battle of is it who or whom, so I went teams instead because I'm not (laughs) sure of my own grammar, and my English teacher from the 12th grade would be really disappointed (laughs) if I messed that up. Non sequitur over. Uh, We have the Falcons' schedule. We've known the opponents for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now they're in an order, and um, they have the lowest in the NFL strength of schedule, which can mean something sometimes because what it technically means is that the uh, the combined record in 2022 of the opponents on the 23 slate, lowest in the league, mm-hmm. which kind of makes you think if the order is good, then it's quite possible that the Falcons have a chance to make hay in a wide open NFC South. Right. Uh, we're going to go through this in segments, right? Mm-hmm. But it's kind of boring podcast, uh, you know, yeah. strategy. Right. If I just read a bunch of names. Yeah. So we're not going to do that. Right. But. How about this? Everybody have like a two-screen experience (laughs) for us. Load up this podcast on YouTube. Open a separate browser. Or if you're listening in your car, don't mess with your phone. And then we can read it to you. But nonetheless, um, just real quick kind of highlights. They open up week one against Carolina. They obviously play Jacksonville in London. They have have an 11-week – a week 11 bye. They actually play every team that – took the top four quarterbacks. Yes. So so there's a lot of interesting <laughs> yeah. things for us to discuss before we get into this thing chronologically. Tori, their bye is also in week 11, mm-hmm. not after the London game. Mm-hmm. There are no Thursday games on this slate, so the rest is pretty even. Yeah. Now, when you first looked at the schedule, what did you make of it? What kind of themes did you extract uh, from what you saw? Yeah, I think first things first was just from a – you know, 5,000 foot view, you were talking about the strength of schedule. Mm-hmm. And I think there was something that, that we were reading where it's like, you know, when you, this is the easiest strength of schedule of any team since 2018. Wow. And since that time, four of the six teams that have had the easiest strength of schedule during that time made it to the playoffs. Not saying that this is like track record for, you know, the Falcons or anything like that. But when you – that's just the facts of it. Those are the statistics of it when you have a, a strength of schedule that looks like this. And I think that that was something that more than where they're playing, who they're playing, the totality of this was where I kind of zeroed in on. But just to kind of, like, go go into it, I, I think – this was something that I said and I kind of laughed about. I was like, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect buy, mm-hmm. but their bye week in week 11, I think is very good. <laughs> like it's a yeah. big, especially considering, you know, two years ago they had the earliest buy because you, at that time you had to take your buy after a London game and they played mm-hmm. the jets in 21 in London and had to take the buy in week six. Mm-hmm. It was the earliest bye week. Last year, they had the latest bye week in week 14. Yeah, and that was late. Yeah. The, the guys, were you could tell, were feeling it in weeks I was. 12 and 13. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it was, that was tough. Like, and it, having it early in the season in 21 was tough. But now they finally have a bye week that's sandwiched in a really good spot kind of right before uh, the Thanksgiving week, which mm-hmm. I think is, you know, that, that time in the middle of November, that's where you would want it. All right, so let's break this thing down, not in quadrants. I mean, 17 is an odd number anyway, but let's break this schedule down into three segments. Let's start with the first four games. I want to highlight a couple of them. Week one, at home against Carolina. Mm -hmm. Week two, at home, so starting with a two-game road trip, against a Rogerless Green Bay Packers. And then they'll go on a two-game road trip, and there's a lot of uh, frequent flyer miles being collected there week three they play at detroit week four they play quote unquote at jacksonville but it's really at london's wembley stadium so that's our first segment Mm -hmm. that i want to dive into yeah london is an attraction we're going to get to that but let's go to week one here because this is super fascinating to me i love this game the air of mystery surrounding this game yeah 
is palatable, and that's what I, that's why I think it's going to be so entertaining to watch how this plays out because there's so much mystery. It really is. I mean, you think about you know just in and of itself, the Panthers have gone through a coaching change this off season, and then they you know send bukus of draft capital, <laughs> and you know they re- the break the break the bank to get Bryce Young, and they mm-hmm. get him. They get the number. He is the number one overall draft pick in twenty th- in the twenty twenty three draft, and he is a Carolina Panther. He's going to be their starting quarterback week one. You know, that's just going to happen, mm-hmm. barring anything absolutely crazy happening. You have no – if you're the Falcons, you have no earthly idea what that means for Carolina. You don't know what it means. You don't know what type of Carolina team you're getting. You don't know – you don't have anything to go off of because preseason – don't even get me started on preseason. Preseason doesn't matter. I don't mm-hmm. care about the preseason. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do care, but not really. Like, mm-hmm. in terms of being able to discern – who a team is in week one, right. you're not going to know. Right. Yeah, that's you're not going to know. And so for this, the fact that you have no idea what the Panthers are going to do offensively, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of – I think this is when things are – it's most fun. But the other layer to this, there's another side of this coin in that the Falcons' defense specifically looks so different than it did in 21 or 22. They have so much more – I mean, I'll say it, firepower. More money has been pumped into – more resources has been pumped into this defense. A new defensive coordinator in Ryan Nielsen who you have no idea really what his game day play calling is because didn't do that with the Saints. And so there are so many layers of mystery in this one game happening in week one that I think it is the best opportunity to really see like a true chess match yeah. in, in real time. And there's no way Arthur Smith is going to throw out any offensive scouted looks either. (laughs) He likes to add layers of the unknown to it. And seeing Bryce Young in week one, probably the best possible thing because there will be nerves and maybe they won't be as reliant on his magician-like capabilities as they might be when they play Carolina later in the year in in week 15. Mm -hmm. So to catch the Panthers and their new dynamic quarterback in week one, probably a plus for Atlanta, especially with the Smith-Nielsen uncertainty Mm -hmm. of it all. Uh, Green Bay is kind of in a a, a a team in transition. Detroit is a team that used to, used to be able to just like write a big green W. Right, yeah. Right there. Not anymore. You can't do that. Yeah. The, uh, this is a fun up and coming team mm-hmm. that plays like the Falcons, built up front. I'm skipping past these because we have to get to facing a real upstart franchise yeah. in Jacksonville and going across the pond to do it, combined with not getting a buy on the other end. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. Break that down for us because it's going to be a challenge for the Falcons, especially Jacksonville is also of note is going to go set up shop in London for two consecutive weeks. weeks. So they're going to go make a home base. Atlanta has to go in there, play an AFC playoff team and come back and get ready for week five. Yeah. And I think that's it's pretty difficult to when you really think about it. And I but the thing is, is I understand not having the bye week after the London game because at this it's point it's the right thing for the Falcons. Right. Yeah. At this point, I especially looking at the totality of the the schedule, I mean, it's not to me it's not a necessity to have it. And especially because of the way that I think I don't know, these London games have become more of the norm. You know, going mm-hmm. overseas, the Falcons did it in 2021 and at that time I didn't think they needed a bye week after that. I mean, they you get home after the game. It's just like it's like a West Coast trip, you know, it's, and I think it's not, it's not as big of a deal, I think. And here I'm saying that mm-hmm. not suiting up, not playing, not really having to un- like to have the whole time change and affecting that. But this is a 930 a.m. body clock game, though. Right. That's the one. And that's the thing weird. That's yeah. Weird about it. I wish that it was later in the afternoon and not a one o'clock kickoff like in Eastern time. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that that kind of I don't like. But I will say I think that where it is and looking at okay you have Carolina you have Green Bay you have Detroit I think those three teams get you to a good place to where you're ready to face a team like Jacksonville who like what you said is up and coming they're right I mean they were in the playoffs last year and and they made a run you know and I think they they're a team that has done a lot via the draft in in recent years that's they're a fun team to watch rebuild as well so I, I don't know. I think – but in terms of, like, breaking this up, 
it's not that's not the hardest part of the schedule in no. my mind and especially starting with two home games i think can be a real advantage and that leads us into segment two which i'll call the trap section yeah right because you can we don't do w's and l's here no. but you could look at houston washington tampa with a new quarterback mm -hmm. tennessee in a bit of a rebuild mode minnesota won a lot of one score games then arizona is seems to be right. really rebuilding and you could look at that and say oh they say if mm -hmm. i can pronounce that correctly <laughs> that, that they're going to come out of that with a lot but i'm calling it trap section meaning that you got to be healthy you're a long way from the bye yeah you it's possible possible to surge during that section mm -hmm. and build some confidence. Or you could also look back and be like, we didn't take that seriously enough, yeah. or we didn't take enough advantage of this part in the schedule. And maybe you're, reg maybe you're regretful when you get to that week 11 bye. Right. And that's what you don't want. If you're the Falcons, you want to, I, I have called it, you know, you're ca calling it like the trap part of the, the schedule. I've been calling it the October grind because okay. you start October in London playing the Jags. And then you have four more games in October against the Texans, the Commanders, the Bucks, and Tennessee. And that two-game road trip against the Bucks, and then you come home and then you immediately go up to Tennessee to play a pretty good Titans team. I mean, that that's a really – that part of it, when you have now gone – that's in week seven and week eight. You've gone that many weeks without, you know, a break or anything like that. That's the part of the, the season that I think is kind of the grind. That's the grind of the season is is from week seven to to the bye. Right. And that's what you – you want to be able to, like, grind through it and get the wins. And I think this is where the Falcons run game, you would hope, is, like, fully established and you are just, like, firing on all cylinders and at, at this point in the season. But if they're not – that's a different story, and it what happens in October greatly impacts how you go into Week 12 after the bye. Yeah, and when you look at, at this bye, we're talking about placement in terms of t in terms of time on the calendar. It also comes after their only West Coast trip, their only Western trip, mm. and then you come back and you play the rival Saints at home with an extra week. That's a huge swing there. But if if you look at the third segment of the year, four of, of the last seven are against the NFC South, yeah. which that's all the Falcons should care about yeah. is can you win the division? What will it take to win the division? And I think winning the division is going to come down to two games against New Orleans, mm -hmm. a home game against Tampa, a road game against Carolina. Yeah, and This I, is the point in the season where you are 100% the word playoffs should be in the back of your head, honestly, in the forefront of your mind. You are playing – to get a playoff berth. And Arthur Smith has said it before, too. He said it last year. You know, the easiest way to get into the playoffs is to win your division. Mm -hmm. you, the Falcons could win the division if you go and beat the Saints and you beat Carolina and you beat Tampa Bay in this chunk of time mm -hmm. at the end of the season. Yeah, and that's why it's going to be interesting. And you'd think coming off of that bye, they would have had a chance to tinker with some things. Mm -hmm. But the, these vic not like any game is more or less important than any, but they're also going to have to play well in close games. Mm -hmm. That's something that we always talk about that never travels between seasons. Uh, two years ago, they were really good in close games. Mm -hmm. In 2022, they weren't, and that impacted their record. Now, this is a better overall team, a deeper – that's a huge word yeah. – a deeper overall team that they're going to need to withstand, especially Saints at New York Jets. Talk about strength of schedule being sort of misleading – that 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 low Jets number included Zach Wilson and not Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> right, it's yeah. a little bit different yeah. team now. So I think when you look at that section in totality, mm -hmm. I think it's definitely a very crucial section. But you've had the buy, you've had an opportunity to gain some momentum or to figure out what all these new pieces can do and when playing together. Now, as we wrap this thing up, Tori, and this is kind of the, the big question when it comes to the schedule. Mm -hmm. When you look at this schedule, it seems maybe not advantageous, but I don't think it's disadvantageous mm -hmm. in terms of how it's structured. When you look at this schedule and you consider the parity within the NFC South, mm -hmm. is there a path to the NFC? No, they have to play well and execute, yeah. but is there a path or – are, or are there any obstacles standing in their way to winning the NFC South? I mean, of course there's obstacles, there always are. Sure. But I do think that when you're looking at the team that the Falcons have put together, 
in 2023. I mean, we're we're near a complete team at this point. You know, you got to go through OTAs and you got to go through training camp and you'll cut down mm-hmm. to a 53 man roster. But I feel like if I were to go out and make a depth chart right now, it'd be pretty dang close to what it'll be in week one, barring any injuries or any major reconstructions. So all of that to say, I think it's really important to remember that over the last two years, this Falcons team, this organization has been pieced together with rookies who were asked to start their careers and and to be playmakers and to be important pieces really, really early in their careers. And a lot of veterans on one-year deals because the Falcons just didn't have any money to pay anybody in the long term. That's what they had for these last two years, and they were 7-10. and ten. Both years, in 21 and 22, I think the Falcons outplayed expectations. I think they, they did more than what I think a lot of people gave them credit for, and that was with the team that was put together with rookies and vets on one-year deals. That's not the team that you're looking at right now. You're looking at a team that has been meticulously put together. Those rookies are now better for the two years that they have had to be relied upon. There, a lot of them are year in, are in year two, year three. Mm-hmm. Then you go out and get Jesse Bates, David Onyemata, Caden Ellis, Calais Campbell, mm-hmm. Bud Dupree, and those are all just guys on the defense. Mm-hmm. Then you get Bajon Robinson. I mean, th- this is a team that when I'm looking at this schedule – knowing what Arthur Smith and Terry Fano and the whole football staff was able to do with what they had the last two years and go seven and ten. I mean, it's hard for me not to to feel very different going into this season than I had the last two years. And I think when you look at how it's broken down, you need to start well, not hot. You need to start well, come out of that 500, the first four, you're probably mm-hmm. feeling okay. And then you talk about the October grind. So So start well. Don't dig yourself a hole, Mm -hmm. grind through the middle of the season, and find your footing to finish strong Mm post-buy. I think if you can somehow do those three things over the course of those three segments of this schedule, the Falcons can at least put themselves in position maybe to play for all the marbles in Week 11 Mm -hmm. against the New Orleans Saints. So did we come up with any absolute answers here? No, we can't because it's the spring. And I refuse to. (laughs) But I do think that there's a lot of insight to be gleaned and there's ways to understand how the Falcons' depth can play into it. It's going to be fascinating to watch it play out. We're going to start actually watching some version of football pretty soon. We have rookie minicamp coming up uh, on the weekend of Friday, May 12th. Then we're going to lead into OTAs and minicamp. Everybody's going to go find a white sand beach and a Mai Tai, and then we're going to come back, and we're gonna, and we're going to uh, attack this season. I think it's going to be so much fun. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here on Falcons Final Whistle, recorded right here in the Ticketmaster Studios, and we will talk to you again really soon, probably post-OTAs, post-minicamp, something where we can bring you more football, Falcons, Falcons football analysis. Yeah. Rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Appreciate you guys for joining. As always, we will talk to you again soon. See ya.